Hey guys, Chris here. Tonight we have a story from one of our viewers who was on a work crew in the Plumas National Forest of Northern California while sleeping in their RV for several nights. They had something harassing them. It turned out it was not human. That's next. Okay, so I am in my base camp. I put this base camp together. I'm in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we're doing tonight. Got a really cool six-man Eureka tent. Beautiful tent. I've had this thing for years. It's kind of fun to bust it out. Got the old Coleman going. Got the uh, the cooler here. And in the cooler, we have a hay bag. Heffenweizen is what it's called. We can see that there. <laughs> there it is. Yes. And that is from the Phillipsburg Brewing Company up in Montana, in Phillipsburg. This reminds me of those old cone tops, cone top cans from like the uh, 40s, 50s, early 60s. Anyways, that's pretty cool. I can open this thing. Oh yeah, there it is. And I am gonna be drinking this right out of this wonderful little can here, so. That is very good. Cheers. Okay, so this story, like I said, comes to us from one of our viewers. His name is John. And John, for 30 years, worked for this tree trimming, tree pruning company out of Sacramento, California. And they would work a lot for PG&E, which is Pacific Gas and Electric. And what they would do on these work crews is they would follow the power lines and make sure they were clear of obstructions of trees and bushes and things like that so it was safe accessible for fire hazard reasons and that was his job for 30 years in the fall of 1998 late October they got a job up in the Plumas National Forest vast national forest northern California 1.1 million acres established in 1905 by Teddy Roosevelt <laughs> love him and this forest is got rivers lakes the middle fork of the Feather River my significant other lives up in the Plumas National Forest so I am up there a lot and her and I we kayak we mountain bike we hike we do things throughout the year snowshoeing in the Plumas National Forest. So this did not happen too far away from where she lives and where we do all these activities. So that fall, late October, John was on a work crew to go into the Plumas National Forest for four weeks and follow this power line and clear any obstructions and trees and branches and just take care of it. And what they would do is they would stay in this RV during the week and then the weekends they would drive back down so they went up to Antelope Lake followed Highway 111 and at one point they found the power line went off the road and there was a gated access that was locked it was only for employees like themselves went through the gate closed the gate locked it and followed this road that paralleled the power line into the wild they went 11 miles over 11 miles and they knew it was very remote and they were going to be there for a long time now like I said they could go home on the weekends which which was really nice for them it was John Derek was the supervisor Mike was a 19 year old kid and Farshid that was their work crew they had two bucket trucks and an RV about the 11th mile they found a spot they thought this would be a great spot to make a base camp set up and get ready for work the next day. They leveled out the RV, pulled the slide outs out, got the beds made, got everything ready in the RV, went to sleep, nothing happened that night, got in the bucket trucks and went up into the wild following this power line to do their work. Going home on the weekends and then every night they would come back to the RV cook some meals in the microwave, watch some movies on the DVD player, and go to bed and wake up and do it all over again. Two weeks went by, 
on the third week after they came back in from the weekend Farshid brought his wife on the third day of that week they finished their work turned, turned the trucks around drove them back to the RV and they had some food waiting for them from Farshid's wife really happy that they didn't have to microwave food and just enjoyed it sat up talking and just had a nice time with each other's company that night they went to bed 11 o'clock about 2 a.m. John's laying there he's asleep but he hears on the roof of the RV a rock hit the roof small rock gets his attention wakes him up and he's listening and he hears another one hit the roof of the RV and then right then Derek said John did you hear that he said yeah and then there was a third one and then John turned the light on and right then Farshid woke up as well and he said hey guys I heard that maybe that's some pine cones falling off of the tree above us and Derek said we're not under any trees and right then the back of the RV there was a loud thud startled them they didn't know what it was but all three of them got up and went out of the RV and around the back of the RV John had a flashlight he's shining it around and they're looking for whoever or whatever that was that was outside they didn't hear anything they didn't see anything John shined the flashlight down and he saw a large rock about the size of a softball sitting there off the bumper of the RV he shined the light up and they could see a dent in the back of the RV right where this rock hit made the thud sound they're like this is crazy somebody's out here messing with us they couldn't believe it they thought this got to be some kids or who knows what there's somebody out here and they thought it was really strange because they were really remote on this locked gate road 11 miles into the wilderness they didn't hear anything they didn't see anything they went back into the RV and they told Mike and Farshid's wife what they saw and this was Wednesday and then Mike the 19 year old kid said I didn't tell anybody this but last night Tuesday night I was laying there and about 2 30 in the morning I heard someone outside the RV walking and they didn't just walk outside the RV they walk completely around the RV once and Mike sat there and listened to this and he didn't know what to do with it he didn't know he didn't want to wake everybody up and he so he just listened some more he didn't hear anything and so he just finally let it go and went back to sleep didn't know what to make of it and so John Derek were talking and they said somebody's out here somebody's messing with us I don't know who it is maybe it's some campers we missed them they're up off in the woods not too far away who knows but there's someone out there or at least there was nothing else happened that night went back to sleep slept fine got up the next morning still kind of talking about it trying to figure out who was that messing with us last night had their coffee got in the trucks and went west on the parallel road and did their work for the day they came back for lunch went back out worked till late in the day came back and had a home-cooked meal waiting for them again really grateful and they were really tired so they didn't want to stay up late so they went to bed at about 2 a.m. again John is laying there and he hears a pebble hit the roof of the RV 
right away, Derek is up, and this time, nobody turns the light on, and Derek says, let's get our shoes on, and if this continues, let's get these, and he said, effers. <laughs> And so they both sat there in the dark. Farshid was listening. Mike was as well. And then it happened again. And then a third time. And then Derek said, okay, that's it. Let's go. And he, they all got up, had their shoes on. They burst out the door, ran around the back of the RV where they saw the dent the night before. And they thought that's where the, these rocks were coming from. And they didn't see anybody there. John had the flashlight. He's shining it around. And they knew whoever was there was just there moments ago. So they look up and they saw this group of trees not too far off the back bumper of the RV. And they thought whoever that was had to have ran over into there and maybe they're hiding behind there. So they quickly made their way to this small stand of trees and they shine the light and they look, they're looking, looking, they didn't see anything. They walked around it, looking inside. There was nothing there. They're in this meadow and they look and they see the tree line off to their right. It's pitch black except for the flashlight. The stars are out. Now, I've seen the stars up there. That's amazing. Just beautiful. And they see this tree line. John's shining the light towards the tree line and Derek says, Let's go towards the tree line. Maybe we'll find them in there. Maybe we'll hear them or something. They went towards the tree line. Now they're getting quite a ways away from the RV. Over 200 feet. All four men are out there. They're looking into the pine trees, just expecting something, some sound or some movement or something. They don't hear anything. Right then, they hear this blood-curdling scream come from the RV. It's Farshid's wife screaming. They're like, oh my God, we left, we left her alone. All four men turned around and they ran as quickly as they could around the group of trees to the back of the RV and into the RV. Farshid's wife was trembling and crying. And she was speaking in Farsi. And Farsi is a Persian language used in Iran, very common in Iran. And Farshid and his wife were Iranian. And they, the guys were saying, what's she saying? What's she saying? And Farshid was saying, I don't know, hold on, hold on. And he was listening, trying to understand what she was saying. She was so upset and excited and she was talking really fast. And then he said, all she's saying was, it's a monster. It's a monster. And right then, John had this chill come over his body. And he just paused for a moment like, oh my God, what is she talking about? And she was still really upset. Trying, for she was trying to calm her down. And finally, she was coherent enough and she was talking, still talking on Farsi, so Farshid was interpreting, and John and Derek and Mike are saying, well, what is she saying? What is she saying? And she said, she was standing up, looking out the side window of the RV, and she could see their light, and where they were, and they were way off behind the RV, off towards the forest on the right side. And right then, out of nowhere, came this, she, this is what she called it. A giant gorilla came up to the window and was staring right at her. Just a few feet away outside the RV. And she froze with fear, staring face to face with this. And she didn't know what it was. It was a Sasquatch. And she's standing there frozen, staring at this thing. And she had just enough fight or flight or something inside of her where she was able to let out this loud scream. Right then, this thing, this giant gorilla, Sasquatch, turned and ran and disappeared as quickly as it came. And that's when they 
showed up just a moment later. She was so upset and she was still just rambling about this thing. She was able to explain that it was a gorilla that walked like a man. That was her interpretation. She didn't know anything about Bigfoot, Sasquatch. She said it was huge. And that's all she said. And then she said, we have to leave immediately. She demanded that they leave. Now. And Farshid tried to calm her down with the help of some whiskey, is what they, he said, John said, that she calmed down and he explained to her, honey, we can't leave right now in the middle of the night. It's too dangerous. Something happens to the RV or one of the vehicles. It's, it's a really bad road. We could be stuck out here. We have to get through the night. And she, they comforted her and let her know that they would all work together and protect her and they would protect each other and they were going to get through the night, which would be okay. She was okay with that, at least enough. The next morning, Farshid and his wife left early that morning. They were gone. She had to get out of there right away. John, Derek, and Mike finished out the day, got in the one of the bucket trucks, the Ford F-350, and they're driving back to Sacramento for the weekend because they still had to come up and finish off the job. Nobody said anything about what happened the night before. They didn't want to talk about it. They all know it's a Bigfoot. It has to be, and now they know there was a Bigfoot out there somewhere in the forest. They came back Monday morning. Farshid came with them. He brought his hunting rifle. Derek brought a shotgun. Mike and John joined them and they were going to finish out the work that week. Nothing else happened that week. They wrapped everything up, packed up the RV, and getting ready to turn around, they took one last look around the area, make sure something was going to happen, and they followed this road out back towards the highway, 11 miles, got through the gate, locked it, and they were on their way. John said he knows he didn't see it himself directly, but he knew what he experienced, he knew what they all experienced, and he believed what Farshid's wife claimed she saw and knew that she had seen a Sasquatch in the Plumas National Forest, October of 1998. And that is our story for tonight from John in California. Thank you, John, for sending that in. Really appreciate that. Pretty crazy story. Uh, I can't imagine the, what they felt after they went through that in the middle of the night like that. Just crazy. But we've got more stories coming. We're going to get out there. we got lots of things planned up. So thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys like stories about the strange, unexplained, and things that go bump in the night, please like and subscribe. I always appreciate that. I appreciate the comments, as always. <laughs> I always say that. <laughs> and uh, we will see you in the next one. All right, thank you guys. Keep hiking.